Chapter 7 Imogen was incredibly disoriented. Once again, she woke up and had this sense that she was somewhere unfamiliar. It was unnaturally quiet. No cars were whipping by or honking. It was still dark outside, but there was a lightning that signaled impending morning. Some small noise or movement had woken her. Her eyes were crusty, and she dimly remembered Gabe waking her up every few hours to ask her questions. God, he was persistent. Ugh, the concussion. Memories of the moose, the hospital, and sleeping in some strange man's house in Vermont came tumbling back, and she groaned audibly. At the noise, a shadow in her window shifted and became larger. Her breath caught for a moment in surprise. Was there someone outside? It was barely dawn, but she was in the mountains, so it could be a bear or something. The size seemed about right. If it was another moose, she was packing her bags and going straight back home. Refusing to be intimidated, after all, her dog was snoozing peacefully curled up in a ball at the foot of the bed, Imogen slowly crept to the window. When she was in position, she whipped the curtains back suddenly, intending to surprise the lurker. Instead, she was the one to let out a blood-curdling scream. Cookie jumped up, hackles raised, and began to howl. Imogen just stood there, dumbfounded. It wasn't a bear at all. The dark brown horse stared back at her, unwavering despite the noise. The only thing showing he was even a little nervous was a wide eye and flared nostrils, fogging the glass as he stared right back at her through the partially opened window. What the heck? Imogen knew Gabe had some animals on the property. It seemed like a little farm, but was this horse wild? The barn was on the other side of the house. They stayed like that for some time, just staring at each other. Then the moment was broken when Gabe came running into the room, sliding into the door jam and stubbing his toe. He let out a curse, hopping on one foot, but didn't stop his forward motion toward Imogen. Are you okay? What the hell was that scream? Are you hurt? The questions were fired in rapid succession, but Imogen didn't hear them. She was intent on his naked chest, and was surprised to find it covered in tattoos. He seemed so straight and narrow earlier, but damned if she didn't like it that he had a little edge. No, down, girl. You have a head injury and are only here temporarily. Besides, she had never been the type to jump into something physical without a relationship. He was off limits. Sorry, there was something outside my window and I panicked. She pointed at the animal, who miraculously still stood outside watching them. No, not watching, but actively trying to open the window with his mouth. What in the world? Did your horse get out? Gabe winced as another pain throbbed through his toe. His heart was still trying to regulate. He never wanted to hear her scream like that again. It had taken years off his life. Even stationed in Afghanistan, where he'd live on the edge of something bad happening at any minute, hadn't caused his heart to skip like this. There was just something about her innocent appearance and iron-strong personality that he found he wanted to protect. That's not one of my horses, but he does look familiar. He glanced at his watch. It's almost time for me to feed the animals anyway. Let's get dressed and go outside. It's weird he's just standing there. Horses usually run away at loud noises. He smirked at Imogen, but she just laughed. I screamed, but you yelled loudly too. How is the baby toe? Gabe refused to smile at her teasing tone, but he wanted to. She could just tell. Just fine, thanks. I'm a big boy. He left the room to don some clothes while Imogen watched him limp away. She turned once again to the window and said, You stay right there. You have some explaining to do. The horse just blinked at her, then shook his head, his forelock settling haphazardly over his ears in a goofy way. Surprisingly, the horse was still outside her window. She waited for Gabe. Imogen knew a little about horses. She had grown up taking riding lessons at one of the local show barns in Colt's Neck, only quitting when she went to college. But it had been several years since she'd been around them. Gabe was the more experienced of the two. The horse was quite large, much larger than the horses in the paddock. She felt vindicated in believing he was a bear. Anyone could have made that mistake. 
Gabe grabbed a halter and lead rope from the nearby fence, then stood with her a safe distance away while the animal grazed unperturbed alongside the house. In a quiet voice, he told her, I know this horse. He belongs to an equestrian facility on the other side of the ridge. It's not a long way, and there is a trail, but I don't know how I got here. He has a reputation for being difficult to handle. Stay behind me and keep Cookie back, no matter what happens. Imogen glanced down at Cookie, who was sniffing around the base of the round pen, tail wagging. Gabe nodded at her, then explained. He's trained, but if I can't get the halter on him, I'm going to try and get him to run into that round pen there so he doesn't take off. He made it here with only a few scratches, but a broken leg isn't easily fixed, and the ground is rocky. That made sense to her. She nodded in reply and held her breath as he approached the grazing animal, crooning softly to him in a low voice. For his part, the horse seemed quite relaxed and ignored the man approaching him. Gabe was close enough to touch and reached out to place the lead rope over the animal's neck when the world exploded. The horse, relaxed and unperturbed one moment, sprang into motion at the touch of the rope, shooting straight into the air, his front legs clawing the sky. Gabe jumped back out of the way just in time to avoid the hooves as they slammed back into the ground, leaving deep grooves. But the horse wasn't done. Instead of running away, he turned toward Gabe, head down, ears pinned, and teeth bared. There was nowhere for him to go. Gabe was going to get hurt. Hey! Imogen yelled. Both the horse and Gabe stopped all movement at her sound, but stayed focused on each other. Gabe did not back down, but began to shift his weight to the side, allowing the horse to have an opening past him so he had somewhere to run rather than through him. Imogen kept talking, the horse's ear twitching toward her. Aren't you a handsome man? How did you get over here, huh? She didn't know what the hell she was doing, but the horse seemed interested, so she kept going. You scared me this morning when I saw you at the back window. I thought you were a bear. The horse sneezed, so of course she assumed he was laughing at her. Yes, obviously you aren't a bear. You must be hungry. Why don't you follow me and we'll get you some breakfast? While she had the horse's attention, Gabe began to slowly walk away toward the feed room. He didn't want to leave her alone with an aggressive horse, but she had stayed put on the deck like he asked and had a little barrier in case things went sour. He ducked in to grab a bucket and some of the sweet feed he gave Rowdy on occasion. He was only gone a few seconds, and what he saw when he came out surprised him. Imogen remained on the deck, but had a hand stretched out in introduction, while the big animal stretched his nose out to sniff. His presence broke the moment, but he made a split-second decision. Imogen, I have some breakfast for your friend here. Why don't I give it to you? You can carry it to the round pen and leave it for him. Maybe he'll follow you. She grinned wide. That sounded easy enough. She put Cookie in down stay, then walked off the deck. Keep a wide berth, Imogen. You saw how fast this horse can move. If he changes his mind, don't try to catch him. She just winked at him and ignored the horse, walking directly past him. This big guy doesn't scare me. He just doesn't know us. She walked over confidently and took the bucket, shaking it a little. Yummy. Without looking at the horse, she walked directly to the round pen without hesitation. Gabe and the animal both looked confused, but stayed put for a moment. Then, to his surprise, the big bay seemed to decide and followed slowly behind Imogen into the pen. She set the bucket in the center, giving herself plenty of room. She hadn't been around horses in a while, but she'd worked in a shelter with aggressive dogs, and she knew things could change quickly. There was no way she could outrun this horse if he wanted to get her, but she would at least give herself a fighting chance. When the horse began to tip the bucket over and eat the pellets off the ground, Imogen slowly backed away while Gabe closed the gate. The horse never even looked up from his meal. She let out a big breath that she'd been holding. Well, if this isn't the most insane 24 hours of my life, you Vermonters really like to live on the wild side, huh? Gabe let out a laugh. I was going to say that you must have brought the chaos with you, Jersey. We usually live a quiet life here in the mountains. They smiled at each other in a moment of quiet relief and turned back toward the horse. Imogen asked, You said you know this horse? So, can you find the owner? Yep, Gabe replied. I'm the local veterinarian, so I know most of the livestock and animals around here. But his owner and I have been friends for years. 
I'll call the barn before I feed the other animals. I'm sure they'll be looking for him. You're a veterinarian? Imogen realized he'd said he had a stressful job, but she never asked him for details. Wow, she was obviously a little self-involved yesterday. Gabe laughed at the look on her face. The bruising on her cheekbone was a little worse than yesterday as it darkened, but that was to be expected. Still, it made her appear paler, and her freckles stand out. Cute. That is, until you got close enough for her to bite. Like a Tasmanian devil. That's me. It's a tough job, but I've never wanted to be anything else. Gabe rested his arms over the gate, watching the horse toss the bucket and look for more grain. I kind of envy that. I've never known what I want to be when I grow up. Now I'm grown up and still haven't found that something that makes me want to get up in the morning. She didn't look at him while admitting it, but kept her eyes on the horse. For some reason, it felt good to say it out loud. It was easier to talk to a stranger. Everyone always wanted to fix things for me. Hey, Imogen, I found this great job for you. But it never sticks. I get bored easily, then quit and find something else. Cookie is the only thing in my life that's permanent. Gabe didn't respond, nor did he look at her. His silence was surprisingly comforting and made her confession slightly less cringeworthy. She contemplated the brown horse in front of her, who raised his head to look back at her, blinking softly. His long forelock fell over one eye, making him look rather flirtatious, but it lasted only a minute. She laughed as he shook his head and his hair stood in all directions, catching over his ear like a dunce cap. What a weirdo. It was hard to believe this was the aggressive horse from only moments ago. He looked like a goofball. Gabe watched her out of the corner of his eye as she focused on the strange horse. She seemed better today, a little more relaxed, and the lines around her eyes were gone. Do you still have a headache? She looked up at him and said, Just a little one. I'm sure it'll be gone once I have some water. He was more than a little surprised that she was so calm this morning with everything that had happened. She was pretty good in a high-pressure situation. He couldn't help but be impressed with how she seemed to take things in stride. He cleared his throat. I better feed the animals before they revolt. Then I must get to work. Are you okay to stay here for a bit? I can take you to your aunt's on the way. I'd like to stay here with him until his owner arrives. He simply nodded and left to make a phone call while she sat on the grass next to the round pen and waited. <laughs>